Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I am your host, John DeBod, a.k.a. The Bod Father. And as always, I bring you guys awesome interviews. And today it is an honor and privilege to have Miss Margarita Monet, the vocalist and keyboardist of Edge of Paradise. We're going to be talking to her about their third album, Alive, that's out, and uh, see what's up with those folks. So Margarita, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. Thank you again for having me. So let's get right into this. I'm going to go back just a little bit, I guess, to when you guys mm-hmm. first formed. And this is, I thought this was really, really cool. You and Dave Bates formed Edge of Paradise in 2011. And you guys mm-hmm. worked with legendary producer Michael Wagner. And this is really cool. He worked with Skid Row, Ozzy Osbourne, Metallica, Doc and Accept, Motley Crue, White Light, Extreme Poison, Megadeth, Overkill, Testament. What was going through your mind at this time when this was happening? I mean, you know, this is a legendary producer helping you guys. What what was your take on this? Yes, well, first, when we released our first CD, Mask, we released it like two months after we decided to form the band. And those songs, I didn't write any of them. Dave already had them written because he had a band with Robin McCauley, Tony Franklin, Greg Bissonette. And they uh, had all this music that they never put out. So we did, when we formed the band, we decided, you know, that was a good stepping stone for us to something to build from. So after we released that, you know, mask, we, we were like, well, now we have to figure out what we want to sound like. And In a Dream was the first song that we've written together. And we knew that in order to compete with the level of the band, you know, that's out there, we really had to make sure that the production was, um, you know, to the level. And also we wanted to work with someone great. And, um, you know, we've always been fans of Michael Wagner. We grew up listening to his work. So we emailed him and, you know, we never thought he would respond to us, but he did. And I guess he liked that, you know, I sing high or, you know, there were, he thought that we were, you know, kind of unique. So he mixed in a dream and then we went on tour and then to the East Coast. And on the way back, we stopped at his studio in Nashville and he has such a phenomenal studio. So we were like, well, we have to record the rest of the CD here, you know, and Mm -hmm. we just became also really good friends. And Michael is like part of the team now, you know, so it was a great privilege and we learned so much and he's just so inspiring. I still can't believe that we got to record a whole album at his studio in Nashville. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, you know, it's definitely an incredible experience. What's impressed you the most about making your guys' third album alive? What's caught your eye about it, if anything, Margarita? What sticks out more to you for it? Yeah, I think Alive is our best music to date because that I think we grew as people and we grew as musicians. And for myself as well, I think I really found my voice now and I'm more brave about experimenting with it, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, I think also the way it came together, the whole message behind the city and how the music reflects it really came together nicely for us. And uh, um, I'm really proud of this one as well. <laughs> so I can't wait to, you know, people to hear it. This album was produced by Chuck Johnson, who's worked with Corn and Slipknot <laughs> and mixed by Jay Rustin and Mike Plontenkoff. I don't know I pronounced his wrong, name wrong, <laughs> last name. And, uh, <laughs> And Michael Wagney, and I guarantee I, I pronounced his last name wrong. Anyway, mm-hmm. but how was working with these guys? Ah, <laughs> uh, well, Chuck, we Chuck is out here, and we met him through a mutual friend in Chuck Johnson. I think he was so perfect for this one because we wanted to take the sound a bit more heavier, more mainstream, and he was a great, you know, person to work with to bring that out of us. You know, if you listen to Corn and Slipknot, that's why you kind of hear more, I guess, edgier sounds to mm-hmm. our music, more industrial. And, uh, you know, he is also great. He is such a cool guy. And um, he worked at Indigo Ranch Studios out here. So, I mean, he has so much experience under his belt. And he really understood our vision and he understands our music and us as musicians. So it was great to work with him. And also, you know, Jay Rustin, 
he mixed Alive and Shade of Crazy, Michael Wagner mixed Mystery, and Mike Potnikoff mixed Humanoid and Dust to Dust. And all of them have such, you know, their work is so unique to the, themselves. And I think each of them brought, you know, they put their own stamp on every song. So what I love about all of them is that everything we work on it's like, you know, it's like a work of art on its own. So the song can really stand on their own. And, you know, they they understood what we wanted <laughs> them to sound like. So, you know, we're just very happy with the outcome. We're, we're very lucky to have such a great team of people. Any songs off the new album that stand out more to you than any on it possibly? <sighs> That's always a hard question because every song, it's like your child, you know? <laughs> True, yeah, I really yeah, yeah. put you know, my heart and soul into every one of them. But I guess if I had to pick, to me, Mystery, probably, because Mystery is also, I wrote it on the piano first, and, you know, I, could, um, I can really showcase the piano in there. And just the meaning of it, you know, the, it's very personal, and I think it's also relatable to our other people, you know, like it's basically accepting that well, life is a mystery and all the bad, you know, all the horrible things, all the tragedies that happen, you know, sometimes we can't explain it, but um, in order for us to recognize the light in life, there has to be, you know, the darkness, but we can all make through that. <laughs> we can make it through. And it also ties in nicely to the whole message behind the CD Alive. How much growth musically have you seen yourself and band go through up to the release of this new album from you guys? Yes, I think it's night and day from where we started. Just because, I mean, personally, I don't come from a rock or you know metal background. I grew up playing classical piano. And so for me, it was really important to basically develop as a singer and, and, you know, find my own style and just, you know, as a band as well to discover our sound and really shape it. So I think it takes time. You can't really rush the process of finding that and really nurturing that. And I think I'm lucky in a way that everyone in the band understands that it's about the songs. It's not about showing off you know as musicians and that's not what we want to do we want to just make really great songs and no matter what our individual parts are as long as you know we do what the song needs and i think it takes time to really understand that and to be able to work with each other and i think we've accomplished that so yeah you know (laughs) and i hope we keep growing you know what? I, I'm going to throw this out here too. You got a phenomenal voice with this band, and it fits perfectly. But you know, there's there's a lot of other female vocalists that are fronting metal bands, and I think it's fucking awesome that you guys are finally coming through. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yes, there's a lot of I, I don't want to say competition out there because I think everyone can find their place in music, but mm. you know, you definitely need to break through, and I hope. You know, this CD so far, the reception has been really good. And we just found out this morning that we made it to the Billboard charts. We made it to 100 top new albums. And we were 58, I think, current hard rock album. Mm -hmm. So for us, you know, we've never been on the charts before. So that's a big accomplishment for us. And I hope, you know, we just keep climbing. Yeah, I hope there's more female vocalists that come come out because of of, of ladies like you and the Butcher Babies, and uh, I think her name's Alyssa White or Melissa White, maybe from uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. So I hope that uh, there's more female fronted bands and and they're not scared to come through to do this because you ladies can rock. Most of you ladies can rock out with these dudes. I'm telling you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I hope so, too, and I hope we all support each other, <laughs> you know? Right. And, you know, as far as I, like, from the bands we've met, you know, fronted bands, they were all, you know, great musicians and, you know, girls, they also work very hard, and <laughs> we can we can bring it live as well. <laughs> we can compete with the guys, so, yeah, what I think it's cool. In your own opinion, Margarita, what do you hope the fans take away from this album once they start to listen to it and digest it? What do you hope that they get from it? Basically, the message behind it is that 
you know, we all caught in this life and we, you know, the way our society is right now, it's very based on technology and, you know, all of us are always in this rat race and chasing time and monetary gain. And we just want to send this message to say that, you know, sometimes you have to take a moment in your day and acknowledge that your life, you know, don't just live to exist. You have to take it in because you know, time goes by very fast. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that there's more to life than just, you know, what we, <laughs> our everyday, I guess, jobs and chores and, you know, and we want to encourage more human relationships and interactions. So, you know, we hope that people, this record has some sort of a significance to people and encourages them to kind of hold on to their humanity, <laughs> not get lost in this, you know, machine of a society and also, you know, enjoy the music and hope it brings some, some enjoyment to their lives, no matter what they're going through. And, you know, we just want to connect with people. So, and of course, hope to meet everyone out there on the road at our shows. But, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Speaking of the fans and everything, when they come out to see you guys, what can they expect at a show from you guys? What are they going to get from Edge of Paradise? Well, our show is epic. <laughs> we, we put a lot of emphasis on sounding great. We want to sound as close to the record as we can amped up with the live energy of the show. And we also put a lot of eff emphasis on the visuals. I'm a from, you know, I'm from a theat theatrical background, so I want the stage show to be very, you know, stunning and to be able to support the music. So people get as an experience, you know, when they're at our show, it's like an experience for them. So, but it's a lot of fun. <laughs> We're in the digital era now of recording and plus getting music out there a lot faster and EPs and things like that. Do you like this that we're in right now to get music out quicker recording wise and plus digipacks and things like that now? Well, for us, so <laughs> that doesn't really apply to us, I guess. I mean, I understand what you're saying and a lot of bands do put out music quicker just because of the technology, but we still, I mean, every song takes probably a month for us because we do go to real studios and we you know i guess we're a bit old-fashioned in that way because we spend a lot of time making sure that all the tracks are you know as best as they can and then we layer the songs so i mean what is kind of sucks is that you know People think that now if you have a laptop and you can basically create music and put it out there, it really saturates the market. I, for, for us, we really want to concentrate on putting quality out there. And, uh, you know, it would be cooler if we can <laughs> do it even faster. But, uh, you know, re the reality is, I think if you really want to put out quality something, so it really competes with everything that's top, you know, at the top out there. It still takes time. So <laughs> as far as I know, still kind of time consuming. What made you want to become a musician? What was that spark for you that said, that's exactly what I want to do right there? <sighs> you know, since I was four, I started playing piano and I've, you know, I've always, I was always a performer. So honestly, I never thought I would be doing anything else. But my parents had DVDs of uh, live concerts from Queen and Led Zeppelin. And actually, you know, when I, when I would watch them, I would think I could never do that. Because, you know, I was a pianist and I was in like theater shows and stuff like that. But I could never imagine myself fronting a band. So now, but I wanted, always wanted to. So now I still kind of can't believe that I'm doing this. And I'm, you know, happiest that I've ever been doing it because I, I love creating and I love music and I love performing. So it's kind of a perfect thing for me because I get to do everything I love in one thing. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I guess I was born loving music. <laughs> I'm sure you guys get this and even after the shows, but 
What's it mean to you, Margarita, when you receive an email from a fan or prior to the shows or after the shows? They come and they tell you that Edge of Paradise's music has pulled them through a tough time where it's given them inspiration to overcome obstacles or it's just made them to relax on the everyday bullshit that we go through. What's that mean to you guys? It means everything because, honestly, that's why that's what continue, inspires us to do what we do. And that's what keeps us doing it because it's not easy being in a band and, you know, recording and we, we have a lot of obstacles to go through as well, but hearing that really makes everything worth it. Just to know that you, you know, brought some positive positivity to someone's life. To me, that's, that's everything. <laughs> it's very special. Alive is going to be out this month. Is that correct, March? Oh, it's already out. At the Israel. It's, <laughs> it's already been out, out for the a tent. week. Yeah, so that's why we're, today was the day that marked the first week sales. And yeah, so far so good. <laughs> How can folks stay in touch with you guys? Buy this new CD, uh, buy some merchandise, tour dates, things like that. How can they do that, Margarita? Yeah, so our website is edgeofparadiseband.com. And from there, you can find us on Facebook, on Twitter, which is just Edge of Paradise. And our CD is out on iTunes and Amazon and Google Play and Spotify. So if you just search Edge of Paradise Alive, it should come up. And drop us a message on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. You know, we're very social bands. We love hearing from all of you out there. And yeah, you can. You, so we're easy to find. Before I let you go, ma'am, will you care to do a promo for the show? I would love to. Cool. Hey, this is Margarita from Edges Paradise, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Everybody stick around. We've got some great music coming up, and you only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour and Uber City Radio. Please go pick up a live from Edge of Paradise. You're going to dig it. Thanks, Margarita. Thank you so much for having me.